Welcome to the Cryptocurrency Iceberg. This iceberg is meant to be the most comprehensive one on anything cryptocurrency related. I want someone who knows absolutely nothing about anything cryptocurrency related to be able to leave this iceberg knowing more than people who have been in the space for years. That being said, I need some help flushing this iceberg out because it is still very much a work in progress. This video is just going to cover tier 1 of the 8 tiers this iceberg consists of. So if you have any ideas on what I should include in future tiers or have criticisms about tier 1, please leave a comment. Because I plan on going going back and editing all of these videos into one massive iceberg video after I've finished making them. Also, you can check out the full iceberg in the link in the description below. And before we get into tier 1, I do want to shout out the only other cryptocurrency iceberg that I could find, which is this one on icebergcharts.com. I'll leave a link to that one in the description as well. Alright, let's get into it. Tier 1 mostly focuses on the basics that you need to know to understand what cryptocurrencies are. The goal with this tier was so that anyone, no matter how much they already know about cryptocurrency, could listen to it and then have a general understanding of how cryptocurrencies work. A lot of the things mentioned in this tier could be elaborated much farther, but for simplicity's sake I explain as little as I have to, and then we will dive into some of the more niche aspects of these topics as we get farther down the iceberg. It makes sense to start with cryptocurrency since it's literally the thing that this iceberg is about. So what is it? In its simplest form, a cryptocurrency is a digital currency that has no central authority, such as a government or bank, controlling it. This means that tasks required to keep a currency working, like keeping transaction records and security, are all done by a decentralized network of computers. If you break down the word cryptocurrency, you get two words, crypto and currency. Crypto stands for the cryptography that is used to secure any given cryptocurrency network. Currency is because they are typically used like traditional currencies to be exchanged for goods and services. Often people refer to cryptocurrencies as simply crypto. This is a very basic overview, but we will get into a lot of the nuances as we get into this video. Bitcoin is the largest and most important cryptocurrency. It was the first successful cryptocurrency and ushered in everything we know as crypto today. Bitcoin was created by an anonymous person, known by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. It was launched in 2009 and was quickly adopted by a small group of people, and over a decade later it would become one of the most valuable assets of all time. Bitcoin aims to be the most secure and decentralized money that has ever existed. To understand what exactly Bitcoin is, I think it's important to hear directly from its creator. In 2008, while introducing Bitcoin in an email list, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another, without the burden of going through a financial institution. Basically, Bitcoin is meant to be a way for people to transfer money to one another without any need for a bank or government's help. This is just scratching the surface of all the ideas that Bitcoin encompasses, and we will definitely be talking more about it in this tier and in future tiers. Blockchain technology is at the heart of what makes cryptocurrencies work. A blockchain is a list of records that are called blocks. These blocks are securely linked together and contain a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp, and transaction data. Since each block contains data from the previous block, in order to modify any one block, you would need to modify all blocks after it as well, making blockchains very resistant to modification. The idea of a blockchain has been around since the early 90s, and ideas similar to it even stretch back to the early 80s. But it didn't gain widespread popularity until its use in Bitcoin in 2000. Bitcoin uses the blockchain as a publicly distributed ledger, meaning that it's basically just a list of transactions that everyone can view. Since everyone has access to this blockchain, it is easy to verify that everything is being done correctly. And yes, literally anyone can go and look at the blockchain and see every transaction that has ever been done. If you check out blockchain.com, you can easily go view it for yourself. This is meant to be the antithesis of our current financial system, where large transactions are done behind closed doors, and where only those who participate in them can verify their authenticity. Cryptography is a major part of what makes any cryptocurrency or blockchain secure. The word cryptography is actually derived from the Greek words cryptos, which means hidden secret, and graphene, which means writing. Some cryptography that you may be familiar with is where you write a letter to a friend, but you shift every letter in the alphabet down one. So if you write a B, it stands for A, or if you write a C, it stands for B. To the average person, this looks like nonsense, and they can't read it. But since you already told your friend how to read your letter, they should easily be able to understand it. The goal is to make sure that only the person the message was intended for can read it. If a nosy mailman wants to read your private letter, he won't know how to decipher what you wrote. Cryptography in regards to computers and cryptocurrencies is basically this on steroids. Pretty much every website that you go to is encrypting your data so that no one can intercept it and steal your personal information or credit card number. Only the person with the key can access it. Concerning cryptocurrencies, cryptography is used to make Make sure that transactions can be secure and trustless, meaning no third party, like a bank, is needed to conduct a transaction. We will discuss the specifics, including the many ways that cryptography is used in cryptocurrencies throughout this iceberg, but for now, it's just important to know what it is and the important role it plays within cryptocurrencies. 
Peer-to-peer -peer networks, also known as P2P networks, are a type of network that consists of many different computers making their resources available to one another. The computers that are connected to a peer-to-peer -peer network are known as nodes. This type of network is in contrast to the typical client-server network, where users need to connect with a server in order to receive information. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are great because they allow communication directly between participants, without a third party. Peer-to-peer -peer networks were popularized by the file sharing service Napster in 1999. Napster allowed users to share files, primarily MP3s, directly to one another. So if you had the latest Red Hot Chili Peppers CD, you could rip it to your PC. Then if someone was looking to download a song from that album, they would ask the Napster server for it. Napster would then point the user to your computer and the file would be sent directly to them. While Napster was a peer-to-peer -peer network because files were directly transferred between computers, the Napster server was used to find the files, which was eventually their downfall, because in 2001 they were shut down for a copyright infringement. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin also use a peer-to-peer -peer network. In fact, the original Bitcoin white paper written by Satoshi Nakamoto is titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. However, unlike Napster, Bitcoin does not have any direct involvement from a third party. It is purely peer-to-peer. -peer. Next on the iceberg, we have nodes, and this is more or less a direct continuation of the peer-to-peer -peer network entry. But we are going to look more specifically at how nodes function in regards to cryptocurrencies. As mentioned prior, a node is any computer that is participating in a peer-to-peer -peer network. The idea is that all of these nodes have equal power and are able to function as both the senders and receivers of information. This is why they are called peers. There is no node that is necessarily better or worse than another. They are all cooperating to make the network better as a team. On the Bitcoin network, each computer running a full node of the Bitcoin Core software has the entire blockchain downloaded, meaning that every block from the day Bitcoin went live in 2009 until now is stored on that node. This allows each node to independently verify that every transaction and block is accurate when it talks to other nodes. This also means that nodes can verify new blocks as they are created. These nodes are extremely important for the Bitcoin network as well as every other cryptocurrency network. To keep the network honest, each node can check and see if everything is being done as it should be. This means that many different people are able to verify the network is running correctly, rather than one central institution deciding independently if things are up to standard or not. The other great thing about nodes is that they are usually designed to be easily ran by anyone. Bitcoin specifically makes sure that the requirements to run one of their full nodes are accessible by most people with a computer and internet connection. The more people there are to verify the authenticity of the Bitcoin network, and the stronger the network gets. There are other types of Bitcoin nodes, but we will touch on those later. For now, you just need to know generally what they are and how they function. Next, we have decentralization, and this is important because decentralization is kind of the point of everything cryptocurrency related. A lot of the stuff we have been talking about, like peer-to-peer, -peer, nodes, cryptography, and blockchain have all had the goal of helping to explain how cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin can work in a decentralized way. Decentralization is defined as the process by which the activities of an organization, particularly those regarding planning and decision making, are distributed or delegated away from a central authoritative location or group. So in Bitcoin's case, it is trying to decentralize the financial system. It is money that requires no singular institution to run it or process transactions. Trust isn't involved in any way because thousands of people are all working to make sure the network is running properly. This is in contrast with our current financial system where with a bank you must trust them to hold your money and keep it safe. Or if you use US dollars for example, you must trust the United States government to not devalue your money. Many other cryptocurrencies are working to decentralize other aspects of our lives. Typically they focus on finance, but not always. We all know what a wallet is. It's a little thing you stick in your pocket that holds your driver's license, money, and credit cards. A wallet in cryptocurrency terms is very similar. A cryptocurrency wallet is where you store your crypto. Every wallet has its own unique wallet address. This is a string of numbers and letters, which is known as a public key. A wallet address usually looks something like this. And actually, this wallet address is one of the first and likely belongs to Bitcoin's creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. Your wallet address is kind of like a house address. Everyone can know what your address is, but that doesn't mean that they have the keys to get inside your house. With your home address, someone could send you mail or even drive by your house and take a look at the front yard. Similarly, if someone knows your wallet address, they can send you crypto or even take a look at the activity from your wallet on the blockchain, but they can't get inside it and remove funds. In contrast to your public key, every wallet also has a private key. This private key would be like the key to your front door. It is meant to be a thing that you keep private because if you started leaving house keys around everywhere, someone could walk in your front door and steal everything you own. If someone gained access to the private keys of your wallet, they could steal everything from your wallet and there is nothing that you could do about it. So basically what you need to know is that a wallet is a place you can store your cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency related items. A white paper is a document that the creator of a cryptocurrency or crypto related project uses to explain their project. 
Typically, this involves explaining what problems their project solves, what it does to solve the problem mentioned, as well as goes into some of the more technical aspects of the project. Really, it's just a fairly quick overview so newcomers to the project can understand what the project is about. White papers have been a thing since the start of crypto with Bitcoin. Months before the first version of Bitcoin was released, Satoshi Nakamoto created a white paper and sent it to a cryptography mailing list in order to get some people interested in the project. Bitcoin's white paper is mostly a very technical paper explaining in depth how the Bitcoin network would work. This was important at the time because of how new a concept Bitcoin was. Nowadays, you see white papers come in all shapes and sizes. Really though, the goal always remains the same. Explain your project and get people excited about it. While Bitcoin is the largest and most prominent cryptocurrency, Ethereum easily takes the number two spot. Ethereum is a cryptocurrency that has the goal of adding more functionality to the blockchain. The big thing with the Ethereum blockchain is that it is programmable. This means that applications can be built on top of the Ethereum blockchain and add more functionality to it. On the Ethereum website they state, this also means Ethereum is for more than payments. It's a marketplace of financial services, games, and apps that can't steal your data or censor you. So essentially the goal with Ethereum is to take many of the ideas that Bitcoin has and expand and build upon them. The native currency of the Ethereum blockchain is Ether or ETH for short, so you can think of it kind of like the Bitcoin of the Ethereum blockchain. When you hear people talk about the price of Ethereum, they are usually meaning the price of one Ether on the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum has played a very important role in expanding the uses for cryptocurrency currency and blockchain related technology, and we will definitely be touching on many of the things it has enabled later down the iceberg. A stablecoin is a type of cryptocurrency that is designed to have its price pegged to another asset. This typically includes being pegged to a commodity like gold or an already existing currency like the US dollar. The main goal of a stablecoin is to offer the stability of another asset while also giving you the benefits of blockchain technology. While there are several types of stablecoins, you most commonly hear about stablecoins pegged to currencies, especially ones pegged to the US dollar. Several of the top 10 currencies by market cap are US dollar pegged stablecoins. This is because they offer an extremely easy way to keep your funds in the crypto ecosystem without being in an extremely volatile asset. Maybe you want to trade Bitcoin. So while the price of Bitcoin falls, you keep some money in a stable coin. Maybe you want to send money overseas to a friend, but don't want the volatility of Bitcoin. A stable coin can make the process much quicker and easier than going through traditional financial institutions. Basically what I'm getting at is that there are tons of reasons you might want to use a stable coin. A big downside to stable coins is that they typically require you to have a lot of trust in the companies that create them. If you have $10 in a US dollar peg stablecoin, you have to trust that the company that runs the coin has the money and reserves for you to cash out your $10 in that stablecoin and convert it back to US dollars. This has a lot of people afraid of putting their money in stablecoins, and as we have seen, stablecoins can fail. Like with everything in this first tier, we are going to be discussing more about stablecoins later, including the different types of stablecoins as well as some of the more famous stablecoins. The term altcoin is short for alternative coin. An altcoin typically means any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin, although more recently many have been using it to mean any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin or Ethereum. The term altcoin is really just a good way to distinguish the main cryptocurrencies away from the over 18,000 other ones. Here are a few ways you may hear the term altcoin used. Dude, what altcoins are you invested in? Yeah, I hold a few altcoins. Altcoins have much smaller market caps than coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum. This makes them more niche and riskier investments. A lot of people invest in altcoins hoping to find the next big winner and make a ton of money. NFT is a term that stands for non-fungible token. Your standard cryptocurrency like Bitcoin for example is fungible. Bitcoins are not unique to one another. Every Bitcoin is exactly the same, meaning that they are interchangeable. An example of something that is non-fungible would be a house. Every house, no matter how similar, is always different to every other house. Houses can have more or less rooms than one another, they would be built on different pieces of land, they would have been built in different years. All of these traits make each house completely unique and is something to consider while buying one. NFTs are a type of asset stored on a blockchain that proves ownership of something very specific and unique. Typically the ownership conveyed is of a picture, like the Board Ape Yacht Club pictures that most people probably associate with NFTs. It can also be a video or an MP3 file, but really anything could be attached to an NFT. NFTs are stored in programmable blockchains like the Ethereum blockchain and can be easily bought or sold by users. NFTs are verifiably unique on the blockchain, meaning that they can't be copied, which is one of their biggest strengths, but they also have many flaws. For instance, the files that NFTs represent are usually stored off of the blockchain. This means that at some point in the future, those files could disappear and your NFTs would basically represent nothing. NFTs also don't transfer any legal ownership of the assets that they represent, meaning you could buy an NFT for thousands or even millions of dollars and another individual would still own the legal rights to it. 
And that wraps it up for tier 1 of the cryptocurrency iceberg. Hopefully all of that made sense. I really love cryptocurrency and blockchain related stuff, so making tier 1 was definitely a lot of fun. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this tier is only scratching the surface. There are so many interesting and crazy things that go on in the cryptocurrency world that I can't wait to cover in other tiers. If you have anything that you want me to change or add to this iceberg, please let me know in the comments below, or go submit a proposal for it over on icebergcharts.com. I have a link to it down in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you during tier 2.